No, Peter Fyodorovich, I see nothing here except that you are trying in every way to offend me. Now, that you cannot say, my most gentle friend and benefactor, that I am trying to offend you. You remember, I didn't say a word last year when you built a roof, a hole three feet higher than the regulation measure. On the contrary, I made it seem as if I'd ignored it completely. Believe me, my most gentle friend, even now I would completely, so to speak, but my duty, in short, responsibility demands the observance of cleanliness. Judge by yourself. If on the main street suddenly, much good your main streets are, the women all go there to throw out whatever they don't need. If you please, I must inform you, Ivan Ivanovich, that it is you who are offending me. True, it does happen occasionally, but for the most part, only by the fence, the sheds, or the storehouses. But that a sow in Pharaoh should get into the main street, into the square, such a thing. What of it, Peter Fyodorovich? Sows are God's creatures. I agree. The whole world knows that you're a learned man. You know science and various other subjects. I never studied any science, of course. I began learning to write longhand when I was going on 30. As you know. I came up from the ranks. Hmm, said Ivan Ivanovich. Yes, the police chief went on. In the year 1801, I was a lieutenant in the 4th Company of the 42nd Regiment of Chasseurs. Our company commander, be it known to you, was Captain Yeremeyev. Here the police chief poked his fingers into the snuff box that Ivan Ivanovich was holding open while rubbing the snuff. Ivan Ivanovich replied, Hmm, but it is my duty, the police chief went on, to obey the demands of the government. Do you know, Ivan Ivanovich, that someone who purloins an official document in court is subject to criminal prosecution, the same as for any other crime? I know it so well that I'll also teach you if you like. It says that about people, if you, for instance, had stolen the document, but a sow is an animal, a creature of God. That's all very true, but the law says guilty of purloining. I ask you to listen attentively. Guilty. Here neither kind, nor sex, nor rank is mentioned. That means an animal can also be guilty. Say what you will, but before being sentenced to punishment, the animal must be presented to the police as a violator of order. No, Peter Fyodorovich, Ivan Ivanovich objected coolly. That will not be. As you wish, only I must follow the instructions of the authorities. Why are you trying to scare me? Really, do you want to send the one-armed soldier for me? I'll tell my serving woman to drive him out with a poker. He'll have his last arm broken. I wouldn't dare argue with you. In that case, if you don't want to present her to the police, make whatever use of her you please. Butcher her for Christmas whenever you like and make some hams or just eat her. Only if you're going to make sausages, I'll ask you to send me a couple of the ones your Gapka is so good at making with pork blood and fat. Maya Grafevna Tofevona loves them very much. I'll send you a couple of soft sausages if you please. I'll be very grateful to you, my gentle friend and benefactor. Now, allow me to tell you just one word more. I've been charged by the judge, as well as by our, our acquaintances, to reconcile you, so to speak, with your friend Ivan Nikiforovich. What? With that boar? I should be reconciled with that churl? Never. It will not be. It will not. Ivan Ivanovich was in an extremely resolute frame of mind. As you wish, replied the police chief, treating both his nostrils to snuff. I wouldn't dare give advice. Allow me to tell you, however, that you're quarreling now. But once you're reconciled, but Ivan Ivanovich began talking about hunting quail, which usually happened when he wanted to change the subject. And so, having achieved no success, the police chief had to go back where he came from. Chapter 6, from which the reader may easily learn everything contained in it. Hard though they tried to conceal the matter in court, by the next day the whole of Mirgorod knew that Ivan Ivanovich's sow had stolen Ivan Nikiforovich's petition. The police chief was the first to forget himself and let it slip. When Ivan Nikiforovich was told of it, he said nothing, asking only, Was she brown? But Agafya Fedoseyevna, who was present, again began to get after Ivan Nikiforovich. What's the matter with you, Ivan Nikiforovich? You'll be laughed at like a fool if you let it pass. What kind of gentleman will you be after that? You'll be worse than the woman who spills the sweets you like so much. And the obstreperous woman convinced him. She found a middle-aged little man somewhere, swarthy, with blotches all over his face and a dark blue frock coat with patched elbows. A perfect office ink pot. He tarred his boots, carried three quills behind his ear and a glass vial tied to a button with string instead of an ink pot. He ate nine pies at one go and stuffed the tenth into his pocket and he could write so much of every sort of calumny on one sheet of stamp paper 
that no reader could read through it at one go without interspersing it with coughs and sneezes. This small semblance of a human being toiled, moiled, scribbled, and finally cooked up the following document. I'm going to have to find recourse in Constance Garnett, which of course somehow I managed to drop my bookmark out of so that I have to look through it. There we go. I found it. I guess I'll start from the beginning. Chapter 6, from which the reader may easily learn all that is contained therein. In spite of all the efforts of the court to conceal the affair, the very next day all Mirgorod knew that Ivan Ivanovich's sow had carried off Ivan Nikiforovich's petition. The police captain himself, in a moment of forgetfulness, first let slip a word. When Ivan Nikiforovich was told of it, he made no comment. He only asked, Wasn't it the gray one? Pretty sure the other one just said brown. Isn't it amazing that the translators will change a color? But Agafya Fedoseyevna, who was present at the time, began needling Ivan Nikiforovich again. What are you thinking about, Ivan Nikiforovich? You'll be laughed at. As a fool, if you let it pass. A fine gentleman you'll be after this. You'll be lower than the peasant woman who sells the donuts you are so fond of. And the pertinacious woman talked him around. She picked up a swarthy, middle-aged man with pimples all over his face and a dark blue coat with patches on the elbows, a typical scribbling pettifogger. He smeared his high boots with tar, wore three pins in his ear, and a glass bottle by way of an inkpot tied on a string to a button. He would eat nine pies at a sitting and put the tenth in his pocket and would write so much of all manner of legal chicanery on a single sheet of stamp paper that nobody could read it aloud straight off without intervals of coughing and sneezing. This little image of a man rummaged about, racked his brains, and wrote, and at last concocted the following document. To the Mirgorod District Court from the nobleman Ivan, son of Nikifor. Dov go chunk. Concerning the aforesaid, my petition, the which was from me, the gentleman Ivan, son of Nikifor Dov Kachunk, relating to the gentleman Ivan, son of Ivan Pererapinko, wherein which the gentleman, wherein which the district court of Mirgorod has manifested its partiality, and the same brash arbitrariness of the gray sow, which was kept a secret and has reached our ears from persons in no way concerned therewith. Where to the partiality and connivance as of evil intention falls within the jurisdiction of the law inasmuch as the aforesaid sow is a foolish creature and thereby the more apt for the stealing of papers. Whereupon it is evidently apparent that the sow frequently aforementioned could not otherwise than have been incited to the same by the opposing party. The self-styled gentleman. Ivan, son of Ivan Pererapinko, the same having been already detected in housebreaking, attempted murder, and sacrilege. But the aforesaid Mirgorod court, with its characteristic partiality, manifested its tacit connivance, without the which connivance the aforesaid sow could by no manner of means have been admitted to the stealing of the paper, inasmuch as the Mirgorod district court is well provided with service, to which intent it is sufficient to name one soldier present on all occasions in the reception room who, though he has a cross eye and a somewhat useless arm, is yet fully capable of driving out a sow and striking her with a stick, wherefrom the connivance of the aforesaid Mirgorod court thereto is proven, and the partition of the ill-gotten profits therefrom on mutual terms is abundantly evident. The aforesaid robber and gentleman, Ivan, son of Ivan Pererapinko, is manifestly the scoundrelly accomplice therein. Wherefore, I, the gentleman Ivan, son of Nikifor Dovkachung, do herewith inform the said district court that if the petition above mentioned shall not be recovered from the aforesaid gray sow or from the gentleman Pererapinko, her accomplice, and if proceedings shall not be taken upon in its accordance with justice in my favor, 
Then I, the gentleman of bond, son of Nicophore, will lodge a complaint with the higher court concerning such illegal connivance of the aforesaid district court, transferring the case thereto with all due formalities. Yvonne, son of Nicophore Dovkachung, gentleman of the Mirgorod district. <laughs>